Good morning, traders. It's 8.03 a.m. Chicago time on Wednesday, the 22nd of June, 2016. Derivatives trading involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. This, uh, this morning, uh, very light on news. There's not much to talk about. We all know Janet Yellen testified in front of the Senate yesterday. Uh, nothing earth-shattering. The same thing will happen today at uh, 10 Eastern, 9 Central. Uh, other than that, oil is back above uh, $50, trading at $50.20, got as high as $50.54. The DAX is very strong this morning, trading uh, up 0.77% or 77 points. It's trading at 10,107 euros. The market stance as it sits right here is is a tour there's an appetite for risk this morning uh, money's moving towards risk assets with the US dollar being the laggard down 0.47 percent followed by gold gold's back down to twelve hundred and sixty eight dollars so the overall um, shift is towards um, towards risk assets um, there is a poll that came out this morning about Brexit, but uh, I, it seemed way off. It seemed like it was way overwhelmingly on the side of uh, Remain. I forget who it was done by. But uh, again, unless you've been living under a rock, uh, you probably know that tomorrow is the Brexit, Brexit vote, uh, and it's anticipated that it would be very, very volatile. In fact, many clearing firms have raised uh, margin requirements, initial margin requirements, to 200% of exchange margin requirements. That puts the DAX margin at something like $40,000 per contract or something. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's really, really high. Uh, the expectation, what are we expecting here for Brexit? The expectation is that as polling takes place, from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, UK time, uh, as the numbers come in, the market is likely to try to price in, um, try to price in whatever the outcome is going to be. To me, it looks like if I were to guess, and I'm a betting man, uh, if I were to guess, uh, I would say that uh, nothing will happen. That uh, the the uh, that Britain would remain a part of the Eurozone, but that's uh, to be found out tomorrow. I'm going to be trading I'm going to be trading the overnight session, so I'll be leaving the office today after the uh, pit close and then coming back at midnight central time to be um, ready for the Bund open at 1 a.m. central time, 2 a.m. Eastern, and I'm going to trade until 11 a.m. central, which is uh, noon Eastern, uh, then I have a webinar that uh, is listed here on the image in front of you with Futures IO. It is the second part of a series, uh, a small education series uh, dealing with uh, trading mindset. Uh, that's at 4:30 Eastern, 4:30 Eastern tomorrow. Uh, stage five traders will have their AMA today instead of tomorrow because of this Brexit vote. Uh, but overall, the expected volatility is is, uh, is likely to be quite high. Um, the expected volatility is expected to be quite high. Uh, my expectation, and uh, don't don't uh, trade based on this. My expectations is we're li my expectation is we're likely to see uh, new highs across the board on the indices. Uh, we'll see how things work out. But uh, that's where uh, it's likely to go. But it is going to be a very long trading session because it is a very long vote. And it's likely to carry over into the Globex Open here in the U.S. at 5 Central, uh, 6 Eastern p.m. on Thursday because the votes continue to be counted until 10 p.m. London time, which is 5 p.m. Eastern. God, so many time zones. 5 p.m. Eastern, which means when we reopen at 6 p.m. Eastern, we'll still see um, a reaction, um, a reaction to it 
once uh, once the market reopens, once the globex session reopens. So I expect that the volatility would would take place on the open of the European session, uh, especially in the futures. Then the expectation is it'll likely die out. It'll pick back up uh, around uh, the the U.S. open, 6 a.m. or so Central, 7 a.m. Eastern, and it'll continue to the European close. And then we're likely to revisit this uh, high volatility into the close on Thursday, and then even more is expected after the reopen, the Globex reopen in the U.S. Uh, because by then the European markets will be closed and so all hedges and bets are likely to go into the US markets at that point so it'll be a very long day uh, but it is a historic it's a historic event I would not want to miss it even if you don't trade it because of the high margins and the high expected volatility I mean margins are, are going up across the board so margins are a reflection of volatility uh, on a third standard deviation basis so you're looking at you know exchanges uh, across the board expecting uh, a lot of volatility so be careful anyway so that's how things are shaping up looking at today um, the overnight session did not give us much news feds Powell came out and said uh, not taking too much signal from the latest uh, NFP reports MBA mortgage applications came in at 2.9 positive versus 2.4 negative prior. Uh, and then other than that, there really isn't all that much. Sweden uh, announced its unemployment rate, which was at 7.6% higher than the, than the 7.3. Uh, but looking uh, ahead at what we are getting today, we're looking for existing home sales at 9 central, 10 eastern, expecting 5.55 million. Uh, consumer confidence in Europe also at the same time 9 central 10 Eastern expecting negative 7 for consumer confidence advance in Europe um, and then we have a uh, gasoline crude and distillates crude oil inventories expected at negative 1.5 negative 1.5 million distillate inventories expected at plus 1 million and gasoline inventories expected at negative 1.15 million we have Feds Fisher speaking in about 15 minutes. Feds uh, Fisher on um, at the Riksbank conference, and then also at 10 Eastern, 9 Central, we have Feds Yellen coming back on to testify on monetary policy to the House Financial Services Committee. If you've ever watched these things, it's just a political circus uh, with a bunch of clowns just asking silly questions and trying to make a point to their colleagues. So today's uh, testimony in the House is more of a dog and pony show than uh, the Senate version. The Senate version at least has a little more civility to it. So I'm not expecting too much out of that. Let's switch gears here and take a look at <clears throat> the markets, which is what you're here for. So yesterday, the expectations, here we go. The primary expectation yesterday was for the market to drop, to dip down uh, as a, a response to the drop off the day before. Uh, so it was expected to, to dip down and then we're looking for a test of 86 for uh, for the overnight high to be taken out and the LVN to be tested from the prior day and then looking for it to balance out that's pretty much exactly what happened yesterday uh, again they don't the hypos aren't uh, intended to work out exactly like that or exactly as as expected uh, they're simply a plan so that we know uh, what is likely to be dominant in today's auction so don't take these hypos as if they are exact plans of where to buy the, the bottom and sell the top. It's not intended that way. The idea is we look for what is most likely to happen in the auction today, and then you have to look at your whatever technical, uh, technical setups you're looking for in your trading plan to know what prices to lean against. But initially, we're looking for an open auction in range, which we got. We looked for a drop to the, uh, to the close a test of the close which we got and then we look for a test of the overnight high and LVN zone which we got and then we end up the expectations we end up in the middle uh, with a balance given that the wide the uh, range was wide the prior day the second hypothesis 
which did not work out, was an open auction. At first, test higher is the first test. Find those sellers and then drop and dip down even further uh, into the 73 quarter uh, composite LVN. Here's what actually happened in the markets yesterday. I'm going to look at the trigger chart. There's your open auction. You can see that uh, the opening swing was uh, fairly tight. The opening swing was 78 and a quarter to uh, 80.75 or 80.25. I think it was 80.75, and so it was an open auction. We dipped down and close the uh, close the gap close. Here's the gap close right here. This orange line. We close that. Get back to being in balance again. We're expecting balance all day long. Uh, get back to being in balance gain the uh, the energy to break the IB high pull back to balance and then we finally test that uh, the prior overnight high and we test that LVN and then we finish in the middle so that's exactly what hypo one uh, what hypo one was expected to do uh, it's it was a very very choppy trade yesterday and you had to be really picky again today we are likely to get the same thing when we look at the overnight session. If we look at the overnight session here, uh, very very light. There's very little participation in the overnight. The overnight session is expected to generate 180,000 contracts. Is the most common um, <clears throat> um, is the most common uh, uh, volume for the overnight session and I'm defining the overnight session sorry I'm losing my voice and I'm defining the overnight session as the the anything outside of the pit session the pit session is 9:30 eastern to 4:15 p.m. eastern so when we reopen at 4:30 for Globex uh, I'm still consider I'm considering that part of the overnight session and again it generally generates uh, statistically generates 180,000 contracts in the overnight session we have 157 with a fairly tight range and no consensus on price really uh, it's it it has not traded uh, much and has not done enough to tell us to give us any clues so essentially overnight session this is the uh, this is the day session right here that's the range of the day session uh, the overnight session is just inside of it right here uh, and so we don't get anything out of the overnight session it's not giving us any uh, indication whatsoever so the overnight session is very not very useful this morning with that <clears throat> with that information uh, all we can conclude about uh, this morning's action is it's likely again to open auction in range I expect it to dip down again look for buyers uh, the the purpose of dipping down like it did yesterday is to look for those buyers if it finds buyers it's expected to chop back up and push higher and potentially take out this 8575 and if it can find a base on the pullback then the target is likely to be this uh, open naked point of control right up here uh, we are still above the 73 quarter uh, composite LVN so the expectation is buyers will contain uh, will continue to remain in control that is your hypo one for today is an open auction a dip early towards the uh, most valuable price of yesterday 2077.75 and then a push towards the high for a small uh, test of the high potentially extended target 2088 and a quarter that's how things are shaping up the second hypothesis for today same thing open auction uh, in range looking for a test towards the overnight high uh, the overnight session does not give us any evidence that there is strength there but this is the most likely second scenario test it fail and then push lower and then I expect it to just basically sit in the middle into the close that would be hypo 2 so who cares what these hypos are right I'll tell you why they matter they matter because they allow you to compare what is expected anything that's expected versus a person who's coming in and just shooting from the gut and saying I will react to whatever the market does 
what we're doing here is we're setting up based on auction logic we are setting up what what is expected and what what is expected on the hypo first hypo is a choppy open meaning day traders uh, short-term traders locals uh, in control that's what an open auction is indicating which means that it's likely to consolidate and be very choppy it's a great way to lose a lot of money very quickly so if we expect chop on the open we sit on our hands and if and then the expectation on hypo one is that we would go looking for buyers if we're going to go looking for buyers what does the market have to do the market starts advertising lower prices that's what it normally does it advertises normal prices to entice buyers to step in when they do then what do we look for once those buyers step in that's what these hypos are for it's to say if this happens here's my plan if that happens here's my plan as far as what the execution price should be and so on you can use your stochastics you can use your whatever it doesn't really matter as long as you're the master of those tools as long as you're the master of how you enter the market uh, and it has to be your idea your approach built on some sort of auction logic then you have a in my opinion you have a strong edge to grow your your trading business on if you come in and just blindly follow an indicator or if you come in with the idea that your guts gonna tell you what's gonna happen uh, then I think the that that could potentially work I can't judge it but I think that your your uh, potential for for a strong trade or having a strong hand in the market is greatly diminished this is why we create these hypotheses and this is why they're shared with you that's all I had for you for today uh, just look for the market to go fairly dead into the closing session into the closing range today in preparation for tomorrow if you're gonna be up and about uh, tonight uh, at midnight or, or uh, at 1 a.m. Uh, I'll be around. Uh, if not, then good luck, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Take care.